Hello, I'm Frost and welcome back to my beginner's guide on Phoenix Point. This is episode two and we're going to be covering basic combat. Okay, so uh, we're taking off exactly from where we left off in episode one, which is we're going to start our manual combat, which is what Phoenix Point is all about. So what I'm going to do is, uh, first of all, I'm going to explain what everything is on the screen and then we're going to sort of launch into our attack. So, um, First up, bottom left hand side, uh, we have our units. So we have Greg, we have Chitao, Gav, Danny and Bob. So essentially what we can see with this straight away is you have the four little bars down there in the bottom left hand corner under the name, under the picture. And that represents the action points. Now these are also shown on the HUD. The HUD being the little bar above the, the actual uh, unit. So you can see we've got 180 for Greg. That's the uh, hit points, the health, which is represented by the big thick uh, blue horizontal bar. Then to the right of the blue horizontal bar, we have two little orange bars uh, with 20, and that represents the armor. And then underneath, we have the four little horizontal lines, which are the action points. And the action points can be used for moving, they can be used for shooting, or they can be used for healing or any other sort of activity. So you have to decide what you're going to use as action points for. So they don't have to be done in any particular order and you don't have to do all of them. But you could, for example, move a little bit, shoot and then move again, or move a little bit, use your med kit and then move away again. So you have, a, you have an option and you can mix it up. So you should never really forget about that because sometimes you always think about moving as far as you can and then shooting and then you're kind of limited. But sometimes you may want to just move a little bit and then take a shot. Then bottom right hand corner, we have all of the loadouts for your unit. So all of the little chevrons are the ammunition. And you can see that I've got um, 30 times six. So we shoot multiple uh, um, projectiles with the assault rifle. But essentially we have 30 shots and we have the time zero next to it, which is the uh, amount of spare ammo cartridges. Now, as you can see, it's a zero at the moment. And this gives me an opportunity to click on the backpack. So if I click on the backpack, you can see that Greg has an assault rifle and a grenade and a med kit on his person. And then in his backpack, he's got his med kit and his grenade that we added in episode one. So if you missed episode one, you're already a disadvantage because you need these in your backpack. Okay, and then obviously we've got the ground, which represents anything in the neighboring area that Greg could pick up off the ground. So we'll go back. So we've seen the, back, the backpack. By the way, if your unit is next to another unit, so for example, I just move, let's move Greg up a little bit. There we go, just to there. And I go to my backpack again. You can now see, I can see Danny's backpack as well. So if you're sort of short on med kits or anything like that, you can run up next to your buddy and you can nick stuff out of his backpack. So it's something that's very useful to be aware of. All right, so uh, the last thing we've got to cover is just the, uh, the weapons. So at the moment we have uh, the assault rifle selected and then we have the grenade and then we have the med kit. So depending on which one you select, this menu along the bottom here will change. So for example, right now I've got the assault rifle. So the options that I have is I can fire my weapon. I can go into overwatch, which is basically where you protect your units during a, the turn of the enemy. Uh, I can reload or I can bash, which is where I just take the assault rifle and just do a melee with it. Uh, or I can just stand by. Then if I select the grenade on the other hand, I can either throw my grenade, I'm not allowed to bash with the grenade, apparently it doesn't do enough damage, <laughs> or I can just stand by. And then same with the med kit. At the moment, it's, I can't actually use it because no one needs any healing and there's no valid targets around, but that little cross would be highlighted if, uh, if I could actually heal somebody. So there you go. So that's everything you need to know in terms of what's on the screen uh, at this stage, because we can also look at info. So info, uh, we can do for us and we can do for our enemies. So if I click on info, there you go. You can see the hit points, the will points. Uh, will points I cover more in a minute and then the, the movement. So we can use, move up to 16 tiles uh, with Grek. And then we can see the ammo. We can see the state of all our hit points on an individual basis around our body. And we can also do this with the enemy. Once we spot an enemy, we can do info and we can then see where their weak points are, what kind of element they have, etc. So we're going to close that and I'm going to take Bob. There we go. Hi, Bob. Right, so with Bob, I'm going to just demonstrate something that's very important within the game. 
Now, right now, we want to get into this building, and we can either go through the sort of the courtyard entrance, or we can try and find a door around the back, or we can just blow our way through, because everything in the game is destroyable. So if I grab my grenade, and I click here, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop it right next to that wall, and I'm going to throw. Good throw, Bob, good throw. And you can see, we now have an entrance. So you should be aware that, for example, if you've got enemies under cover, throw a grenade, clear the cover, you get a better shot. Uh, or if you need an entrance, then you just create one like I just did right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to take, um, let's see, who have we got? This, we've moved a little bit already. There we go. We've moved Greg a little bit already. So Greg has still got some movement. So what we're going to do is we're going to just pop him behind this lamppost. And then we're going to make use, and we're going to select our assault rifle. And we're going to make use of our Overwatch. So Overwatch, which I mentioned earlier, allows you to provide cover during the opponent's movement. And the cone is the area of effect where if anything enters within this orange area, then um, Greg will kick into action and take a shot. So what we're going to do is we're going to cover this door right there. So if anything comes through the door, Greg's got it handled. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to deal with the jetpack. So I'm going to swing around a little bit and zoom out. So um, GTIO is my heavy unit, and so he has a jetpack. And the jetpack you see is down here on my uh, action bar. So I can select jet jump, so I'm going to do that. And as you can see, I can move and wherever the, wherever the yellow dot is. Um, so I could move right up on top of the building here, or I could move onto this low roof. Now, because um, Jitayo only has a hell cannon, it's a very close range weapon. So if I put him up on the roof, then he's kind of pretty useless. He's just going to be a lookout and not going to be able to do anything. Now, if he had a grenade launcher, I would definitely put him on the top of the roof because they just lob grenades at everybody. But instead, we're going to go for the low roof, I think. And we're going to pop him right in the middle so he can move to either side when he needs to. So I'm going to pop him right there. And you can see now on his uh, HUD, it says minus two will points. So this is where the will points or the willpower comes in. The will points are used in, uh, for your special abilities. So in the case of our heavy unit, it's a jetpack. Once we get to level two with our assault guys, they get dash, which allows them to move much, much further. So you can see my will points down in the bottom left-hand corner here is six out of eight now. So that's dropped by two. Be aware that if your will points drop to zero, your guy will panic or gal and run away. So you really don't want to get to zero. So you always want to leave yourself a couple because if you lose a unit, everyone will lose some will. So, um, so you need to just be aware of that. Obviously, if you then do some damage or do something positive for your group, then everybody will get will points in bonus instead. All right, so he's in place. Bye, bye, uh, what bye. we're going to do now is we're going to take our sniper. So I'm going to use my scroll bar again and scroll back through. My sniper, I'm going to leave him. I'm just going to leave him at the back here. I'm going to move him quite as far back as I can because he has a really good range. And we're just going to do the same thing. We're just going to put. Holding position. There we go. Some Overwatch on there. And then I am going to move Danny and I'm going to pop him. I'm just going to pop him behind this wall. So it's kind of a low wall, so you're going to see him crouch. There you go, crouches down. And we're going to get him to put some cover on this corner as well. Okay, we're going to, I'm going to assume, because I've got pretty good visibility all around here, that nothing's going to come from this direction. And also, we're going to be pretty far away. And then Bob, Bob has got limited action points now, so uh, because Bob threw the grenade. So I'm going to just, so I can't see, I can't actually shoot or anything or go into Overwatch. It's not an option. Oh, actually, I can, get into, I can go into Overwatch if I don't move, but I'd much rather just move Bob to somewhere more useful. So I'm going to just tuck him, or her, should I say. <laughs> I should remember, Bob's a girl. So I've got to remember to tuck Bob in that little corner. So there you go. So I've used all my action points. Time to end my turn. So as you can see also, it's a turn-based strategy game. Take your time. Work out where you're going to place units. You do not want to lose units in Phoenix Point. Units take ages to level up. And if you lose one, you have to start from scratch. So you have to be play in a very protective, protective way. So you really don't want to go rushing headlong and you don't want to split your units up. Okay, if you split up your people, then you, you can't heal each other and you can't sort of put all your fire onto one opponent, which is always how you want to play these games. You always want to maximize your fire onto one opponent so that that way 
you know, you make sure you take them out completely and they don't get to shoot back. Okay, so there we go. So we know we've got this chap in here. So he's in the buildings. Let me scroll back there. So he's in the buildings. So he's going to potentially come through the door and he's in the courtyard. So what I'm going to do is he's got loads of armor. He's a pretty tough guy. So he's got 32 armor. I'm going to just move him to here. Now, as you can see, when I move to that area, I get this kind of blue horizontal line. The blue horizontal line means, it's, means I can take a shot. If it's an orange horizontal line, it means I can take a shot on my next turn. But obviously I'll have used up all my action points, so I can't actually shoot. But here I'm in a position to do some damage. So I'm going to move him right there. Okay, and I'm going to click on here. I can do an info quickly. So you can see he's got 140 hit points, 66 will points. And then his armor is you know, pretty good on his, um, pretty good overall. His head is actually a little bit weaker as are his legs. Uh, and his torso has got the most hit points. Now, I'm shooting with basically a heavy weapon. So when I attack, right, we now have what we call the reticule, just like the old school cameras. The idea is with it is that this is a one-shot weapon, so it only shoots one weapon, one uh, projectile. Uh, the assault rifles will shoot multiple projectiles. So with this, it's the, there is a maximum chance that the shot will arrive in the inner circle. And then there's, an, there's a possible chance it will go in the outer circle or it may miss completely. So essentially to maximize the, uh, the chance that you're actually gonna do some damage, you want to try and get whatever your target is in that circle. Now the size of this circle is determined by the accuracy of the weapon. The more accurate your weapon, the smaller the circle becomes. So for example, when we shoot with the sniper, hopefully we'll get a chance later on, you will see that the, uh, the, cute, the reticle is really, really small. Now, if I do get a hit, you can see that the, uh, the bar at the top is pink. That means I'm gonna completely take him out. Now, but also I, th this heavy weapon is pretty awful at range. This is actually quite far for this weapon. It's better at like two grids away, but we're gonna give it a go anyway. So we're gonna shoot, Just and as you can see, off. he's a hopeless shot, he's useless. There we go. But anyway, he took a shot, you got the idea. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and provide some cover for this guy. This guy's gonna probably come through. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put ourselves in a position where we can protect ourselves as well. Now I can actually, I believe I can shoot through that window or I can jump through the window. So I'm gonna take Bob. Bob can walk right up to here, but I don't really wanna do that. There's no real place to get good cover. Uh, actually, yeah, what I'll do is I'm gonna move Bob right over here. There you go. The Bob's gonna jump through the window. And then what we're just gonna do is we're gonna pop some overwatch on that door. And then we are going to move uh, Greg. Oh, hang on, I need to make sure I've got him. Let's make sure I've got him, there we go. So I'm gonna move Greg and I'm gonna give him some cover. Now this, this these bunk beds, that's just a curtain. So I'm not actually gonna get some cover from there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move him to here and I should, yeah, so I can get some overwatch like so. And then my sniper, I'm gonna just leave him at the back. Okay, the sniper does not need to be at the front. He's pretty squishy and he has excellent range. And then just on the off chance, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna move, I'm on the move. there and then I'm gonna just provide some overwatch up here. There we go, so we've got that corner sorted. And I might have action points, so I'm gonna end my turn. And we're gonna see what the opponents do. Okay, so he's come through the door. And straight away, there you go, my overwatch has kicked in. And I've just seen there's two of them there. So I need to be extremely careful. So he decided that wasn't a good move. He came through the door. And now, boom, my sniper gets a shot. And misses, unfortunately. All right, so Bob's in a bit of a, t a difficult spot there. So Bob has not got much cover. And, right, okay, so what we're going to do is we're gonna get Bob to throw a grenade. So has Bob got a grenade? Okay, there you go, Bob's got another grenade in the backpack. So that's gonna take an action point. You see, cost one action point. And then I'm gonna lob a grenade at this chap over here. Using because grenades are really good at removing armor. So 
uh, the only danger is, is by doing this, my, um, <laughs> my jutayo, my heavy units on the roof may actually, it may take down the wall and bring it down, but we'll give it a go. We'll see what happens. You're gonna like this. Okay, so these guys uh, have an ability that we don't have yet, which is at a higher level, which is they can return fire uh, when they get attacked. But you can see, so we did some damage. We didn't actually hit the armor but we still did some damage and we also now have line of sight on this guy as well. So what I'm going to do with Bob is I'm just going to take Bob and take Bob outside so Bob isn't in the line of fire anymore. There we go, that's better. And then we're going to come back to that guy we've been shooting at. Now in fact let's try and finish him off because as I said earlier we need to focus on getting this guy. So we're going to move... Now he can be... Um, yeah, I'm going to move him here just so that he's protected behind the wall from this guy. So we're going to move in and we're going to just take a straight shot. And now we get to choose where we shoot. So this is important because if you remember we saw the stats that the, for example the leg has less armor, he's only got 16 armor on his leg. The head has got 20 armor um, and then we've got the weapon. So you can choose where you're going to place your shot. And this is important because, for example, sometimes you'll have an enemy with a grenade launcher and that grenade launcher does a lot of damage. So rather than trying to shoot the person because they've got a lot of armor, let's say they're a heavy unit, you'll focus all your fire on the weapon and take out the weapon. Uh, in this case, I think Matey's not going to have a good day. So what we're going to do is, because we've got such a clear shot, and as you can see, my, my uh, reticule is kind of pretty much covering the whole head, we shouldn't really miss. Now we should get some good damage here. So we're going to do that. You, yeah. we saw a few shots miss. And we took some damage in return. But we are in a much better position now. So, um, All set. my sniper, at the moment, I can move my sniper. Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to focus on getting this guy down. And then, so we'll move him over here as well out of sight of the other guy. Here we go. Here we go. And we're going to take this shot. And once again, we're going to go straight to the head. There we go. Sorry there. Okay, so they got minus two will points. All right, and uh, we're doing good. So right, now what we're going to do is we're going to focus on either getting this guy or this guy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my sniper and I'm going to move him I'm so I'm going to keep him as far back as I can, but I can still take a shot. I don't want to take a shot through the uh, lamp post, so I'm just going to move him one square. There we go, and I'm going to take the shot. Right, and you can see the distance. Even with the distance, the reticule is still very small. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to aim for the the torso uh, more than the head, because otherwise with the head I stand a chance of hitting the wall. So I'm going to go for the torso instead. And you can see I do a lot of damage. There we go. That's it. And, and also he's bleeding. So bleeding is really important. So you can see that he's going to lose 10 health points each turn. So he's going to survive the next turn, but he would definitely won't make it two turns unless he gets healed. So he's not in a good place. Now, I have a guy here that needs some healing, but unfortunately I don't have any action points left except for my heavy unit. My heavy unit's only got a very limited range. So what we're going to do is we're just going to bring him down and we're going to get to shoot point blank this time. And you're going to see that the difference is quite outstanding. So there we go. Straight in the back. <laughs> yeah, no fair play in love and war. There we go. Boom. One shot. So you can see the heavy weapon you really want to use close up. And that's it. So my action points pretty much used up. So I'm going to end my turn. And I'm going to hope that he's not going to take enough damage that's going to kill him in one turn because I can't, I can't actually heal him. There we go. So an end turn. There you go, you can see 10 points, uh, health points lost. And he's decided to make a run for it outside. And he's gonna take a shot at uh, Bob. So the first thing we're gonna do is Bob is in, not, is in a poor way and we know that these guys can shoot back when we shoot. So if I was to shoot with Bob now, then the chances are I would die, or, I'd, or Bob would die, uh, because I, I'm not healthy enough. So I'm gonna take... Um, my healthiest unit, which is uh, Greg. And Greg's gonna jump outside. There we go, he's gonna move there. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our med kit. And then we're gonna click. 
So I'm using my med kit and then I'm going to click. There we go. And it's going to, it's already aware that um, Bob is the one that needs the health. And otherwise you'll have to click on which unit you want to repair. Use med kit. Oh, actually Bob just, just healed herself. So <laughs> that was my bad. I should have, um, I clicked on the wrong unit, but uh, I would rather have done it the other way around. But anyway, that's okay. We could still uh, get a good shot. Hopefully, can we get a good shot? Yeah, let me make sure I've got my assault rifle selected. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so this is gonna be there. Okay, problem solved. <laughs> yeah, so be careful that you have the right unit selected. So there you go, we finished that. Hopefully that's given you a really good idea of how combat works and how you use your units, uh, that you can actually heal yourself as well as heal other units. Uh, you provide cover, you do overwatch, you can destroy walls etc etc and then now we see we are soldiers we can go back to our geoscape uh, so Bob is going to level up because Bob did good all right and then Danny is injured so Danny's going to need to be healed so we can either go back to the haven and get healed up or we can actually just start the next thing and just use a med kit right at the very beginning to heal him up okay these are Gitayo, Gav and Greg didn't do that well so they don't get any uh, bonuses so we're going to go back to our geoscape quickly just because I want to watch uh, show you uh, the leveling up process. So we'll come back straight after this loading screen. Right, so we're back at our Geoscape and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go straight into personnel and you can see that Bob, uh, Bob, and let me click on Bob, there you go, there's Bob. Bob has got a little uh, plus sign and uh, a level up. So what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, use the, the skill points. Also you can see stamina by the way has reduced for everybody because like as I said, as you run around and actually use your units, they take up stamina. When that starts getting low, you need to go back to the Haven and get some rest for your troops so they can be revived. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to training, which is up the top here. And you can see I now have 50 SP. On top of that, I am now at level two, so my little orange bar or yellow bar has moved up and I can now use dash. So that's gonna cost 10 skill points, but I'm gonna take that. And you can see I can now get another 75% range on my movement which is really, really good for, for the assault guys, especially when you're needing to like provide healing or you realize you've kind of moved in the wrong direction, you need to provide cover from a different direction. The dash is really, really good for that. And then I'm going to spend most of it on strength and speed. I'm not too bothered about willpower. I'm only gonna use the dash maybe once. So I'm gonna just put a little bit of points on that, but mostly strength and speed. I really want those movements points. I'm not gonna use my Phoenix SP. Like I said, my Phoenix SP is shared amongst all my units. So I'd rather wait until I've got either I've got a new, new unit or I've got one where I really need to want to focus on some skills. For example, my, I like giving my snipers as much speed as possible because normally their speed is very limited. And so that gives my, my snipers a lot more range. So I prefer to use my Phoenix points for that. So there you go. So I'm gonna go back and we're gonna stop there. And then on the next episode, I'm gonna cover the Havens and trading and all of that good stuff. So I hope you enjoyed that episode. I hope that was useful for you. If you like what I do, please subscribe. If you didn't like it, then don't like. If you liked it, hit the little like. And don't forget to hit the bell icon if you want notifications of my new releases. All right, see you soon. Bye.